The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Steve Rhodes. Come on. Uh, sorry about that. Welcome to the March uh, 8th. Yeah, it's the uh, March 8th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four ship, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, hey, we've got you covered there, too. You can always let your fingers do the walking. That means go ahead and shoot off an email to me. Send it to Steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question and definitely send it off early. You know, with ISPs and so forth, you might send it up at a quarter to four, and I might not get it till five or quarter to uh, two, and I might not get it till the show is over, even five to two. So send it early if you would. And of course, uh, you can always uh, shoot me a uh, ping inside the uh, Tiger's Den, although I'm going to get used to that. So hopefully I'm able to see each of those, but would certainly love to hear from you. So let's go ahead and get this show started. On a Terrific Tuesday, of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we've got all the U.S. indices trading to the upside. The Dow's up 578 points. That's one in seven tenths, one in eight tenths percent to the upside. The same really for the S&P, which is 72 points. The NASDAQ, two and a half percent, 331. The Russell's up two and six tenths or 51. The semi's up 165. That's over 5% move to the upside. Tranny's up 327. Spot volatilities is still above its 50-day exponential moving average. It's printing out at 3285. Gold's up 3570. 2031 is the print there. Silver up 94. Four cents, twenty six sixty. Light sweet crude is up three fifty. One twenty two ninety three is the print there. Leading the charge dollar wise, the upside one hundred fifty three bucks or eight percent is booking holdings. Good, good move there. Google's up ninety two or three and six tenths percent. Tesla's up forty one five percent. SVB Financial forty one bucks eight percent. To the downside, Indonesia Energy Corp up twenty two bucks thirty seven percent. Shopify, 20 bucks, 3.5%. Intuitive Surgical, 15 bucks, 5%. Barclays Bank off 22%, or $14 to the downside. Equinox is off 11 bucks. That's about 1.5%, so kind of muted compared to the others. So let's begin here. The first question coming in is from. Uh, uh, it's from oops, is from Peter, Peter in Park City, I believe. And Peter says, "Can you, yep, Peter, can you take a look at the equity futures?" And so let's start there. So with regard to the equity future contracts, we'll do this a couple of different ways. Uh, here you're going to see the black screen, and I'm going to try to get uh, set up on my other screen out there, if you will. Sorry about that. Uh, but here you're looking at the equity futures right now, Peter. And here's what we know in the lower left hand panel, you'll see that the ES mini tested and rejected its uh, profile, the low of the profile, the bottom profile, 42.58. So a key level of support is held. If price were to close below that, that would signal at least a move to test or should move, uh, signal a move to test the low from February 24th, perhaps even take that out. Where's the ES mini headed to? Well, it's still trading with inside that swing point from February 24th. So it's not like this is a any, any type of significance here other than just a nice rally, at least at that stage. Now, if price closes above 42.90, where does it head to next? Where it would head to next is not much higher, or wouldn't think much higher. That would be the oscillator and change line. That's on a different screen. That's at 42.83. No, it can't be. 42, well, let me, let me I, I can't say it can't be. Let me just look at another uh, 4283. 
for trail kit, 42.83. So 40, yeah, 42.90, close to about 42.90 would be a positive and could even signal then move up to that descending trend line or really the center area of its profile in the 43.69 level. So we don't have that signal just yet, but at the end of the day, that's what you'd be looking for there, Peter, close about 42.90. If you look at the NQ, it's neither tested the swing point from February 24th. It's still trading inside it. There is no profile there. Uh, so with regard to the NQ, I'll have to switch to some other charts and we'll get a feel for. Actually, let me do that here while I'm still, I've got this screen up. Let me just change to a different screen. I give you where the oscillator and change line is for the NQ. And that is, well, we're not trading too far away from it either. So the key level of resistance for the ES is 4283. Uh, for the NQ, it's going to be 13683. So 13683 is the number. Now, if you close above a red oscillator and change line, which is what they are, you don't see those on this screen here, uh, then it would say there could be more rally to come. We'd want to go take a look at the intraday charts, and we'll certainly do that. With regard to the Dow, the Dow has rejected the swing point from February 28th. It did close right below the bottom of its profile yesterday, 32,745. So if we were to close back below that today, that would be a uh, an indication that really it should go test and maybe take out that February 24th swing point. You don't have that message. Price is trading into resistance, and resistance here is its oscillator and change line, which is currently printed at 33,382. And we're at 350, so we're not that far away. Now, the Russell 2000 is a whole different animal. Why is it a different animal? It's a different animal because it's already trading above its red oscillator and change line. And that would suggest to us that it should go try to target its descending trend line. If we're to do that move today, and I'm not saying that's what it's going to do, it's in the area of about 2055. It would be a lower about 2047 or so tomorrow. Uh, but that is if price continues to, uh, I'd say if it closes above, 1997.40. That's not where the oscillator and change line is, but that is the swing point from February the 24th. That would give you the signal that it should move to those higher ground levels. Now, let's do this here. We're going to go ahead and change screens. Give me a moment to do that. Screens. Screen. Well, I want to let me do that. I guess I have to stop streaming, maybe. So let's uh, try that, and we'll come back. How how to stop streaming go out oh, don't show me that uh that's weird okay so screen sorry about that folks just getting a little bit uh, used to this so here get over to the screen and it should be this one so we should be okay now we should be seeing hopefully yeah it's the uh, four daily time frame so i'm going to switch from this out here and now let's go to the es mini and its multi time frame chart so it's going to take me just a moment to get to that we'll populate it shortly and uh, because we're really looking for any other signals some intraday signals as to what the markets are doing so now we've got that eight panel screen out here so now you can see the oscillator and change line and that's really the resistance level or a resistance level for the ES Mini. As we look at a 30-minute time frame chart out here, what we'll see is that earlier this morning at uh, 12 o'clock, well, I guess at noon, we have a TD9 count bottom that formed. And price is above its second TD9 count breakdown area. So that is a, a positive. And when you break above one, you typically go to the next. Well, we've broken above two. Your question should be, where's the third one, Stevie? And the third one is at 43.21. So 4321 is only going to happen if we see a close above that red oscillator and change line. That's at 4382. 4282. 4282. We'll be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education. Investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Dow's up 514, S&P 65. We're taking a look at the ES Mini out here. And uh, so really the next, uh, so you've got the daily oscillator and change line, 4284 or so as a resistance level. Above that on the 60-minute time frame chart, you've got 4290, TD9 count breakdown level. Last night, it was the 120-minute, the two-hour chart that generated the bottom signal is wave number seven. That's courtesy of the Basil Chapman wave out there, although that's not really the entire Chapman wave. We can see that price is running right into resistance. So I think the real key resistance level since this was the only chart time frame that had generated the bottom signal last night granted you do have a td9 count at 12 noon uh, but if we take a look at the two-hour time frame chart we can see how price is dealing with the resistance level of the top of its bearish structured profile and that's up at 4267 call 4268 so if price is able to close about 4268 that would be signaling to us that we should see a continued move higher so that brings in that 4290 level that brings in 4321 it would bring in uh, 4306 those would be your next battleground levels should that take place let's move from the es mini and change over to the NQ out here and see what it is doing. So the NQ's message, a little bit more difficult to gauge because of a lack of a bottom of its daily profile, which is prices below that. You can see here that on the daily time frame, the oscillator and change line, that is printing exactly right now at 13682. That's your next real key level of resistance. Now, on the 30-minute chart, we saw a TD9 count pattern for the ES. You don't have that here in the NQ. What we do have is price taking out resistance. It's TD9 count breakdown level, the uh, top of its profile. And so on a 30-minute chart, this says the next potential upside resistance level is 13,879. Now, it's got to clear through other areas in order to be able to get there, such as 13,694. That's the TD9 count breakdown level on a 60-minute time frame chart. 13,753, that would be the uh, top of the profile on the two-hour chart. And you did get wave number seven yesterday or earlier this morning at about three o'clock uh this morning you did get wave g wave number seven out there so the resistance to, and that's really what's formed the bottom signal here is 13753 the 240 minute chart now you didn't get a, a bottom signal there 
necessarily. So 13,753 is a real key level of resistance out there. So Peter, I hope that helps out, helps you out with regard to the review of the equity futures. Uh, we can come back to these and, and others, uh, but let's go on to our next question out here. This next question coming in from uh, Nicholas. Nicholas wanted to take a look at the SMHs. So let me let me see if I've actually got that. There's two questions that come have come in. Let me see if I've got one of them already queued up here with charts. We're going to go to our eight panel charts out there, whichever one pops out good. It is the SMHs. Okay, so the question from Nicholas is, would you mind going over the MHs? She's going to catch the replay. Okay, perfect. So if you take a look at the SMHs, here's what. So semiconductors having a big rally, right? It was up about, uh, well, as we speak right now, semiconductor index is up a 5%. So if we look at the daily time frame chart out here for the SMHs, uh, what we can see is price is still below the oscillator and change line, Nick. So that first level of resistance or key area of resistance is 256 and change. It says 256.18 right now. That'll Just call it 257. If price can close above 257, then its next resistance level would be the bottom of its daily profile. That's a 260.13. That is a real key area where the SMH would need to close above to suggest that there would be even a further rally up to 270.15. So one step at a time. 256 and change, called 257, then 260, and then 270. As we look at the shorter term, the intraday charts out here, you have a nice Rhodes-Mintum indicator bottom on the 195-minute chart. It has a new profile that formed um, as that as that uh, confirmation, that Rhodes Mintum indicator confirmation was occurring, this tells you there's resistance at 260.63, 269.62. The 130-minute time frame chart formed a TD9 count bottom. Price above the oscillator and change line. This suggests to move to 259.87. If price can clear 259.87, you're looking at 266.74, 266.17. On the 65-minute chart, you had a TD9 count bottom. This suggests price targeting 257.89 is TD9 count breakdown level. I'm sure there's an A to B equals CD to the downside on a 30-minute chart that was confirmed this morning with a, bear, a bullish engulfing candle. This suggests the resistance level is 257.55 out there. So those are all your battleground areas, depending on the time frame that you uh, trade, or even if you're not a trader, you're trading a longer time frame, at least you know where those battles are, and you can tick those off as price gets to those areas. Of course, what you'd be looking for from a long position is for price to clear those resistance points. So that was for Nicholas. Thanks so much for writing in. Let's go to our next question out here. Ah, it's the only one that I also have in the uh, queue. Uh, and this is from John O. And John says, uh, hey, Steve, I picked up 10 shares of Amazon this morning. So let's uh, get these charts here flowing over to Amazon. A-M-Z-N is the uh, ticker symbol. Let's continue reading the question shocked and surprised it got filled he had it down to 2677 my goal when i bought it was the target of 2950 which it touched less than two weeks ago 2950 so the question is do we see the roads momentum indicator or nine uh, uh td9 count pattern or anything else maybe that's going to get in the way of that taking place so when we take a look at amazon here is what we know we know that it has a td9 count pattern that formed the bottom on a weekly basis that was back on january 28th that level was tested I'm going to go off screen here just to see. Now, it's only Tuesday, so it makes it kind of difficult to really come up with a good uh, volume gauge. But what I can at least share with you, John, is that the volume on the swing point that it was testing, the one that began January 24th, that volume was $24 million. You're only a day and a half in, and we're at 7.4 million shares right now. So you got to do kind of the straight line math. You'd be looking for a test of that swing point on lighter volume. If it's not on lighter volume, that says we likely get back down and test that again. So I haven't done the math to know if that's the case. I can share with you on the daily time frame that uh, this was also testing that swing point. Now, this is on a daily basis, and that's the swing point from January 24th. Now, on a daily basis, the uh, swing point from January 24th had volume of 7.8 million shares. Today, we're halfway, we're, we're four hours into the trading session, and you're at 3 million shares. So 3 million versus 7.8. On a daily basis, you're going to reject the bottom of that swing point with lighter volume. Okay, so that helps us. There is a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal that's been triggered, but that needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm that pattern. Regardless, this would suggest that uh, what uh, Amazon is likely going to do is go target the 2908 level. Now, you're talking about 2950. 
2908 is currently the red oscillator and change line. And that really would become its next target. Now, that's on the daily time frame. John, if we go take a look at some intraday charts, such as the 195 minute, you'll see this formed a TD nine count bottom, probably, uh, I don't know if it's an A to B equals CD, but certainly a TD nine count bottom. This suggests that price is going to go target 2870 or thereabouts. That's its red oscillator and change line. Above that, 2918 would be a level where you would have a battle. That's the bottom of that profile for the 195 minute time frame chart. So you'd really want to watch what takes place there if price gets up to that level. You have a TD nine count bottom on the 130 minute chart. I don't see a bottom signal on the 65. I don't see a bottom signal on the 30. And I'm not really going to focus too much in on the 15-minute chart up here. Other than from a 15-minute base, this shows you actually the weakness here, John, in Amazon. So even though I don't have a bottom signal here, we do have its breakout level, which was at uh, 28.16.58. And on that last bar from 15 minutes ago, the bar that ended at 115, that is exactly where price ended. So you really want to see price close above 28.16.58. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, I, I had said, you know, we weren't going to take a look at the 15-minute chart for Amazon, and then we did, and then I've opened it up during that breakout there, and I'm glad that I did. So as we take a look at the short-term time frame chart here, and that's in essence, I think, really what John is also kind of uh, looking for out here. So it's a 15-minute time frame chart. We can see that since 9.45 in the morning on March the uh, 3rd, that since that period of time, we have not seen price close above the top of a 15-minute profile. Each of those levels has been resistance. That was until uh, 12.45 this afternoon. So that's a slight positive. That was a bearish structured profile. You're looking in the lower right-hand corner. But what price did, though, was it got up and it tested and rejected its breakdown level. That's at the uh, 28.16.58 area. And certainly price has not been able to take one of those areas out. So that would really be a clue to you, John. If price can close above that TD9 count breakdown area out there, that would be the first positive and on a short-term time frame chart that you would be looking for. And if it doesn't happen, and this is just a short-term trade out there, um, then you may want to take your profits. You may want to just simply take your profits out there, uh, 26, 77, 26, you know, it's 100 bucks or, or so. Uh, so that's what I would be looking for during the day. Now, what I'm also going to do is we're going to switch off of these charts here. We're going to go to those black background charts. I'll do this as quickly as I can. I'm getting somewhat proficient at that, but that's kind of an understatement. And now we get to this black background schemes. You're also going to see some of the trend lines. So on a daily basis, you can see trend lines that price closed below yesterday. Often, and that, would, that should have been or could have been a level of support. When you break through something that should have been a level of support, the question that you and I would ask, is that become a level of resistance? Now, 132 in the afternoon, the answer to that question is yes. So you can draw those trend lines in as well. They're just short-term trend lines, but nonetheless, those are other things that you want to be paying attention to. And on the weekly chart up there, you can see the large descending trend line that it has. Remember, you did have a TD9 count bottom that formed out here on the trading week of that began January 24th out there. But what we don't know is if volume is going to be higher or lower than that swing point. So that's the thorough review of Amazon, John. I hope that helps you out and the best of luck to you in that trade. Uh, Richard C. writes in, well, Mr. Woodward Avenue, I got to like that. Uh, it's been a long time since I've been down Woodward Avenue. There should be a great uh, hamburger place. Uh, that was in Birmingham. I think it was uh, like on the outskirts of Birmingham. It may be Richard, uh, you, Rick, maybe you'll know about that. You're Shelby Township, so that's cool. Uh, called Red Coat Tavern. I guess I could probably look it up online and see if it's there. I, mean, I haven't been there for probably 40 years, but that used to be the place to go get a, uh, a great burger out there. But in any event, you guys didn't want to know about that. And probably Rick uh, didn't want to know about that. But his question is, I sold Shell, CBX, XOM, and MRO this morning. Okay. Bought these stocks in November. Nice, and it's uh, been a great ride. Yes, it has. We'll miss the dividends. I think we're near a top in oil. So you bought uh, GSK and SOXL. So uh, high oil prices just ahead uh, just lead to lower prices. Well, let's go take a look at crude oil. Uh, we're on the black background charts. So let's do this here. Let me get to their multi time frame charts and see what kind of information we can glean from those. And then we'll go ahead and switch over. I'll get those going on my other screens or certainly attempt to do that. I don't know if I've got the oil charts open, but uh, I don't. Oh, I do. OK, good. So we're good. So as we take a look at light sweet crude, Richard, now you're you're basing your decisions. And I like this with regard to those equities based upon what you see taking place in crude oil. So when I take a look at crude oil, so there's a brand new profile that's attempting to form. It's attempting to form. If you look at the symbol in the upper left-hand corner, you're going to see it's not the typical symbol right now. It's the April contract that we're trading in a light three crude. You would see CLJ and uh, 22 out there. But I'm using my synthetic version of the oil contract because it helps me to be able to generate certainly other profile levels out there. And this gives us our advanced Doppler profile area. So there's new profile that's attempting to form at 118.37. What I won't know is whether this profile takes hold or not. I will know at 6.01 this evening. So we will know tomorrow, Rick. But assuming that it does take hold, and what you need to see is you need to see a close below 118.37. At least get below resistance. Now, when new profiles form and they form below price, that's a bullish message. 
It remains bullish as long as price stays above 118.37. You can see that there's no other profiles here that are coming into play. Weekly, a long time ago, price has been well above that. It's above the monthly. It's above the uh, quarterly out here. And this is suggesting, if we just take a look at from high to low. Now, this is the continuous contract versus the synthetic version. And we've go to from the highs in uh, 2008. And on the continuous contract, that puts us in at 147.27. I don't know if that's what the actual contract at that time that was July. That would have been the August uh, 2008 contract. I don't know if I actually can even pull that up. Or, um, and it would take me a while even if I could. And uh, so, But if you take a look at from that high to low, the $40, uh, minus $40 low, we're above the 0.786 retracement. So if I combine the daily profile level, which price is trading above, that's a bullish message, by the way, not a bearish message. Uh, then this suggests that we're headed back to its all-time high. So that's what I see when we take a look at that. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to change screens. We're going to go over to my white multi-time frame screen out here. And, hey, that was pretty smooth, wasn't it? Yeah, I think that was pretty smooth. So you should be seeing that. Now, in the upper left-hand panel out here, no topping signal. In fact, if anything, this is suggesting higher price because it negated a TD9 count from July of 2021. If we look at a weekly time frame chart, there is no topping signal out here. If I take a look at the daily time frame chart, there is. So voila, what this tells us is that first yesterday was a TD9 count top. So what your what your your instinct is telling you is certainly dead on right. But now what we're doing is we're taking a look at the technical patterns to understand where buyers and sellers are at. So Rick is absolutely right that we got a topping pattern or signal inside of Lightspeed Crude yesterday, the TD9 count. Now, the cool thing about that. Rick, is that if price closes above that high from yesterday, yesterday's high was 130.50, then that's going to tell you this pattern's been negated and also say that you have a strong momentum move to the upside. Well, Steve, -O, what's it telling us now? Rick, see how price is above that green oscillator and change line 110.27? That is a bullish message because that says we have a rising price oscillator above zero. But we do have the valid top. We also have the top of that new daily profile attempting to form. And so what that really gives us is a neutral signal. So the neutral signal says, okay, Stevie, if price were to close below 118.37, does that change it from neutral to bearish? No. It changes it from neutral to neutral to bearish, but not just bearish. In order to get bearish, and I'm really directly speaking here, you'd have to close below that green oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 110.27. If we look at a 30-minute time frame chart out here, I don't have a topping pattern that took place. But what I can see is that price is just simply consolidating with inside its bullish structured 30-minute profile. Price came down. If we and the, Now, the body of the candle is truly the essence of price. Uh, the wicks, the upper wick, the upper shadow, the lower wick, lower shadow, those are just the extreme emotions of that time segment that we're looking at out there. And so if you take a look at the body of the candle, you can see how 121.86 really held their support. The 120-minute chart has a TD9 count top. That's the only top out there. So here it is. It's pretty simple. You got to watch yesterday's high. Price closes above that. Then that says, do not be short. You did get a topping signal. But really what you have right now is something that's more neutral than bearish. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today.
technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Tell them I can't find them. They're not coming through. Okay. Uh, welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, sorry about that. Um, I have a little technical glitch. I'm just going to communicate here to the production room. Uh, so we're us utilizing a new tool that's really going to improve what uh, you know how we interact with each of you. So in the production room, I have been sending you guys uh, messages. And what I get is, is, is at the bottom of the screen, it says messages failed to load. So whether I do that through the host den, whether I do it by just posting something in the Tiger's Den, for example, to each of you denners that are listening, and just to ask you if you had any requests. I do have a couple of requests here from Hector and uh, Patty. Uh, but uh, so uh, just the production room, guys, uh, you know, just so you know what's going on out there. In any event, let's get back to the markets out here. What you should be seeing are the charts for uh, Conical Phil. COP is a ticker symbol. And uh, this is a request from Hector and Patty. And so Hector writes in, happy uh, two for Taco Tuesday. Back at you, my friend. Uh, Conical Phillips today setting up a shooting star. Time to bail is the question. So it may have showed you that uh, signal earlier in the day, but that's certainly not the candle formation that is present at the uh, moment. So you don't have to worry about a shooting star. There's no way that's going to turn into a shooting star. But a uh, good question. And you'd really need to wait till the end of the day. 1.43 in the afternoon is not really a great time to uh, do that. Uh, you also want to take a look at uh, WFC. So let's first focus on uh, conical Phillips. So here's what we know about conical Phillips. First of all, on a monthly basis, looks like you're going to form bar number eight of a TD9 count. We do know that uh, a TD9 count top can take place on bar number eight, but you, need not, you still need bar number nine to complete. So we're going to say that in the case of conical Phillips, look like looks like uh, maybe not just yet. However, in the way that we get a confirmation of that, Hector and Patty, is by looking at the weekly chart. So on the weekly chart, last week was a TD9 count completed pattern. It was a bar following bar number nine. Now, what that tells us, and we won't know until Friday, but on Friday, if price were to close above that high, that high, by the way, is 100.34. We're at 99 in change right now. But if we did get a close on Friday above 100.34, that is going to say that that pattern is negated. Strong upward momentum move is still underway on a weekly basis. And that says that we're going to get uh, higher highs likely moving into uh, at least April. Could be April or May. The daily time frame today is also going to, is going to be bar number eight. Or it appears it'll be bar number eight. The reason I say it appears is because today has to close above the close of bar number four. So to know if we're going to get bar number eight, you need to see today a close above 9804. 
If you get a close above 9804, you'll get bar number eight. You still have to get bar number nine. That says tomorrow's close would need in order to get bar number nine. And you have to do that to get a, at least a completed pattern would be a close above 9741. So those are the two levels to be watching today and tomorrow. What we can see today is that so far the push lower has been nothing more than a test, even though it got through it. Again, that's the extreme emotion, the wick of the candle versus the body of a candle. And it came back and it tested that oscillator and change line, which is currently printed 98.44. Not until you were to see a close below 98.44 would that suggest that price is getting ready to pull back to a, another level of support. The other level of support would get you down to the 92.63, below that 89.69, below that 88.76, and below that 86.36. Those are your battleground levels. But is it time to bail? Look, you've got a TD9 count top that is likely to form by tomorrow. Would I bail today if price was above 98.43? I'd really have to see some short-term signals begin to fail, such as the 30-minute chart that had a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Price pulls back to the breakout level of 98.60, gets below it for one bar, creates a hammer candle. You know it's trying to form a bottom there, and back above that, so it says it was a false breakdown. So 98.60 would be a level that you could watch. That gets us towards that 98.42, so you really concentrate more on the 98.42 than the 98.60 level out here. You do have topping signals, for sure, but all the levels of support, profiles that is, have held, whether it's the 130-minute chart, 65-minute chart, the 30-minute chart out there. So, um, no, I don't see it as a time to bail. Uh, but uh, watch the uh, green oscillator and change line. Your next request was for Wells Fargo, I believe, WFC uh, out here. So let's get those fired up. Um, WFC, I want to get that fired up on my black background charts here. So uh, just waiting for this to to load up here. I have a number of things open. I think this new system is hogging up a bunch of my resources, which is uh, slowing the process down. But here's what we know about Wells Fargo and company. First, we've got an inside day today. And your question, I don't know what your, well, your question was, you know, okay, perfect. So with regard to Wells Fargo, the uh, question is, has the cavalry arrived to buy the D point of an A to B equals CD to the downside? So you can see here, even though I can't draw it in, first, Wells Fargo on a daily basis forms a TD9 count top, bar following bar number nine. Very next trading session, price gets back inside the profile level makes a uh, straight move down to create a TD9 count bottom. You get a uh, basically a one day uh, move higher and it continues to make an A to B equals CD pattern. So we've got the A to B equals CD pattern out here, but of course it's really gonna be dependent on which B point we would use. But here's the deal, regardless of which B point we use for an A to B equals CD, Hector, you must get a bullish reversal candle from Stevie's standpoint to confirm that pattern. We don't have that today. This is an inside bar. An inside bar says that the trend that was in place prior to that inside bar should continue. Well, this is a trend to the downside without any kind of bottoming signal. Today should become bar number seven of a TD9 count. It does say you could get a TD9 count that would form between Wednesday and Friday of this week. I'm not guaranteeing that. That's what could unfold out here. On a short-term basis, we do have some bottoming signals out here, but no levels of resistance have been taken out of any significance. On the 65 minute chart, that level of significance would be 49.34. On the 30 minute chart, that level of significance would be 48.58. So not until price closes above those areas, would you get any form of a signal that there should be further rally. That doesn't mean that the cavalry has arrived and that you've got a bottom signal. But specific to your question, with regard to the A to B equals CD down pattern, there is no bullish reversal candle at 149. And I I can't imagine that you're going to get one of those signals today. And with it being an inside bar, it suggests that Wells Fargo is going to continue lower. Now, we know that price right now on a weekly basis is testing the bottom of its bullish structured weekly profile. The bottom of that weekly profile is actually at 47.51. We're trading at 47.13 right now. So at the end of the week, if that level fails, that suggests lower price. We can see on the uh, monthly time frame chart that price was able to get up to its TD9 count breakdown resistance level. Now it was at the uh, 54.04 level. What that did was that sent price cascading back to its oscillator and change line, which had recently changed colors. Now, when I say recently, it was four bars ago. This is a monthly chart, so somebody might say, well, that's not too recent. But from a bar standpoint, yeah, it is pretty recent. Now, as long as that area holds 45.59, 
It tells you that it's trading between support and resistance, but it's still the monthly chart here would be bullish versus bearish as long as that area holds. So really price is testing some key areas of support, but they're trading just slightly below on that weekly side. So no, I don't think that the cavalry has arrived. I do hope that that helps answer your questions there, Hector. And uh, no other questions that I see. So as long as I'm on, I believe the white screen, is it? yeah, I'm on the white screen. Uh, haven't had a request for gold, I don't believe, have we? So let's go take a look at Goldilocks and get a feel for what's going on out there. Well, we're actually going to go to a break, but I'm going to put up the gold charts up on my screen out here. I'll leave those posted. You can see from a daily standpoint, we're only in bar number seven to the upside. Uh, this suggests that gold wants to continue to move higher. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, up, folks. So we, the Dow's up 81 points. S&P's up seven now. So I uh, took a, a a bit of a hit out there. Okay. So we're taking a look at gold, uh, and gold is trading up uh, 53 bucks right now. 2049 is the print. So here's what if we take a look at. I'm just going to expand this out. Now this is the continuous contract uh, out here, and you can see that there was a TD nine count top out here. This is the high from August 20th. And boy, if that high gets taken out, that just suggests well, one you could create an, a large A to B equals C D to the upside on a monthly uh, time frame. 
them out there. But that's where price is headed to. Again, it's a continuous contract. I'm not sure that this was the exact high on that contract in August 2020, but it's 2089.20 is what shows up on my screen out there. But right now, price is trading above the top of its profile. That is a bullish outcome. If we look at the weekly time frame chart in, with regard to Goldilocks, uh, this has uh, is trading into its TD9 count top. That's back from the uh, April, August of 2020 as well. So getting through that level, 2089.20, that's your real next resistance area. Because price is trading into that swing point on a weekly basis, odds favor that that is going to be tested. But if price takes that out, and then you've got A to B equals CD to the upside for it. If we look at the daily time frame, we're only in bar number seven. So we're in bar number seven. That suggests we should see bar number eight, nine, the bar following nine. Well, if this is going to form a TD9 count top, and I'm not saying that's the top it's going to form or that it will form a top, but if it were, if that were the pattern that were out there, you have to be able to take out today's high. So you have to have a higher high of bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine. So that would set up the next three days, at least peaking whatever today's high might be. Uh, intraday charts do show some topping signals. The nine count on the 30, but price is pulling back to support and holding. The 60-minute erodes meant to indicator signal price holding the oscillator and change line so any of the topping signals out here are fairly muted because all that it's done is price has pulled its way back to support so we're at the end of the show there were a couple of requests that were sent in that i didn't get to uh and mostly because of my troubles here and just navigating the new system and so forth so i will respond to you by email you took the time to write in i didn't get to it i want to go ahead and get to those uh, questions for you but folks stay tuned you've got two more wonderful hours up next your favorite polar bear david white he's up next with the power trading hour tom o'brien he'll take us home i'll be back with you on wonderful wednesday have a terrific tuesday folks